I'm Neil Creek. I'm a photographer from Melbourne, Australia and recently Canon Australia reached out to me and asked me if I'd like to have a look at and test their new EOS RA mirrorless astrophotography camera which is here. Now what makes this specifically an astrophotography camera? Well the most important feature is that it is unfiltered. What does that mean? Well when digital SLRs and mirrorless cameras are manufactured they have uh, sensors that collect the light and those sensors are sensitive to a broad range of colors. Uh, they can pick up everything from the near ultraviolet to the near infrared, just at the edges of our visible spectrum. Um, but we don't want that. We want the uh, light that these cameras capture to mimic what the human eye can see. And so filters are put in front of it to cut off the bottom end and the top end of those frequencies so they better match our vision. Now, unfortunately, uh, much of the brightest nebulae glow inside that area that's been filtered off. So with the filter, we only get around about 20% of the pink light that comes from the particular emission wavelength of hydrogen gas. And so that means we have to take exposures five times as long to get the same amount of information of that pink light. However, if you remove the filter or if the camera is manufactured without one, such as this, then you don't need to worry about that. The camera is fully sensitive to the hydrogen alpha light. That makes it excellent for astrophotography. Now, there are a few additional features in the camera that make it specially suited to astrophotography, uh, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. I'll talk about it a little later. But tonight, I'm gonna be testing the uh, EOS RA, and I'm gonna be testing it against my Canon 5D Mark IV, uh, and using uh, the same lenses, the same settings, uh, and to see the results that we get and also just to see what it's like to use as an astrophotography camera in comparison to my 5D4. Along with the RA, Canon also loaned me uh, one of the new lenses that's designed to fit on the, the R series bodies and this one is a 50mm f1.4 so it's a super fast lens. Uh, that's ideal for astrophotography so I'm keen to see what I can do with this lens that I can't do with my other lenses. So I'm going to get set up and do a few test shots and I'll uh, report in and I'll let you know how it goes. I'm going to be starting off shooting with one of my favourite astrophotography lenses, the Canon 15mm f2.8 fisheye. So this is a rectilinear fisheye with a field of view of 180 degrees from corner to corner. That lets you get huge portions of the night sky in the shot. In fact, it's hard to avoid getting the ground in the shot. So I usually use this for night sky landscapes. Now this is the, um, the EOS F mount. Uh, that means I can't put them on the R uh, camera. Uh, so the so Canon sent along with the camera an adapter lens or an adapter ring to let me make the lenses together so I can use my existing gear with the, uh, the EOS RA. So, um, I've got a good look to the south here at the moment. I've come out to uh, about an hour and a half, an hour's north of Melbourne, and um, I've got a, a nice uh, outlook, a nice view, which you can't see and you won't see until I get some photos. Um, but the south is, is just behind us here, and the Southern Cross and Ida Karina region, and lots of interesting stuff is going on up there. So let's see what the, uh, the 15, the, let's see what the 15 millimeter fisheye can do with that. great features uh, for astrophotography comes in that I don't have on the 5D4 that the EOS RA does have and that's an articulating screen. 
that is an absolute godsend when it comes to astrophotography because the camera is always or often in really awkward and difficult to reach angles and it's hard to see through the viewfinder and having an articulated screen can make that a lot easier. So autofocus generally doesn't work in uh, night sky photos because the amount of light that the lenses need to focus you just don't get enough from the stars. So generally what you do is you punch in on live view down to say five times or ten times to get a view of the stars and then you manually focus. But one of the other features for astrophotography of the RA is that it actually has a straight to 30 times zoom. So you press your zoom button once and it goes 30 times in. So when you're doing that you want to make sure that you're starting off with the star near the middle of the field of view otherwise you'll be hunting around for it but uh, having 30 times zoom in the live view makes a, a big difference in getting accurate focus when focusing manually. Another feature that most of Canon's modern cameras have is a touch screen and uh, that makes it really nice and easy for getting your settings just right. It doesn't uh, means you don't have to go feeling around with the buttons which can be d difficult to do when you're in the dark and the camera's in unusual orientation so having touch screen controls really helps with that. So I'm starting off my first shot for 30 seconds f2.8 and ISO 1600 and let's see how that goes. As you can see here, we've got a nice huge field of view. We've got the Milky Way going out through the center there, out to the right, you can see that hazy cloud, that's a large Magellanic cloud. And almost in the middle there, you've got a little pink spot, and that's the uh, Eta Carina Nebula. There's a lot of hydrogen alpha in that area. Um, in the fish eye view, it may not be the best place to see that because it's such a small part of the photo, but I'm gonna do the same photo with the same settings in the 5D4 and see if there's a noticeable difference. Um, one thing I have noted with this camera is when the live preview or when the, the, the post photo preview comes up on screen, you can use the pinch to zoom on the back screen straight away to zoom in and have a look at it. But I notice that it only previews a low resolution image. That way you might get confused and thinking that the photo is out of focus or that it's blurry when in fact you're just zooming in on a low resolution image. So what you need to do is quit the preview and press the play button and then that will pop up the most recent image and that will show you the full resolution image. So just a little gotcha there that got me at first. All right, let's swap over cameras. So this is an example of what I'm talking about with the screen being at an awkward angle. It's a little bit trickier to get a good view of the screen in order to get your focus just right. But uh, it's not too critical with a 15 millimeter and uh, I think I've got it about right there now. So uh, let's give it a shot and see how it comes out. looks pretty great I'm happy with that but uh, yeah zooming into Eta Carina you can definitely see it's it's lost a lot of that pink it looks a lot less saturated a lot less colorful uh, the whole area sort of blends into one color more I still like the shot I like the look of it but um, this is really showing the benefit of having an unfiltered camera um, the overall color balance is a little different but that's something we can fix in editing um, but overall, it's um, it's comparable, but the the difference is that pink, that hydrogen alpha. This is just a basic introduction to, to what I'm getting done tonight. So I'm just going to spend a bit of time off camera now and get a few shots, maybe do a little bit of time lapse. And uh, I'll, I'll come back towards the end with some thoughts and let you know what I think.
real power of astrophotography comes when you start tracking the stars. So this is a Skywatcher Star Adventure tracker that goes in between the tripod and the camera and I align it to the South Celestial Pole so that when this axis going through the center here rotates, it rotates in the same speed and direction as the Earth's rotation or it corrects for it. So that means that you can follow the stars for longer exposures. So I'm doing a couple of shots here that go for a minute each and that's letting me get a whole lot more detail with a uh, 50 millimeter lens. Normally I'd be shooting 10 seconds, so that's six times as much. But uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna swing this around from Orion where I'm shooting now and I'm gonna point it to Eta Carina and let's see what we can do if we do a, do a sequence of shots and then stack them all together because they're aligned, we can do that. And that lets us add all the data together to get a, a deeper image. And hopefully we'll see a whole lot of that hydrogen alpha. wrapping up my shoot for the night and it's been an, an interesting one. I've learned a lot about the EOS RA. Uh, it's a fantastic astro camera I have to say. Uh, it's pretty much the same as the 5D4 in terms of sensitivity and capabilities and resolution and all that sort of stuff. It's, it's similar. Um, the big difference of course is the fact that it's sensitive to hydrogen alpha light and that really does show up in the photos even on the back of the screen before processing. As it stands, I'm very impressed and I, I think it's a, a worthwhile investment if you're wanting to do serious astrophotography with a digital SLR. Now, there are a couple of shortcomings that I've found with it though. The annoying thing is the screen at the back is the same as the viewfinder because it's a, a mirrorless camera. And so Canon has a sensor on the viewfinder so that when you put your face up to it, it turns the screen off. So it saves power, it doesn't blind you with the screen right in your face. But I couldn't find any way to turn that off. And I'm frequently, because I'm right-handed, I'm reaching across the screen to change settings and that's putting my hand in front of the, um, the proximity sensor and that's turning the screen off. It got really frustrating and I spent a few minutes diving through the menus and I couldn't find anywhere to turn it off. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, it would have to be, um, but I couldn't find it. More seriously, however, um, there does not appear to be a built-in intervalometer. Now, that's something that the uh, 5D Mark III did not have. I used the um, Magic Lantern firmware upgrade to give myself access to an intervalometer. Uh, but the 5D Mark IV does. You would think with an astrophotography specific camera that that would be a core feature. It's, um, yes, you can use a, a hardware intervalometer, something that you plug in and use, you know, battery powered. But that's an extra bit of gear to, to buy and to remember to bring with you and to remember to have batteries. Um, it's an extra cable, it's extra hassle and inconvenience. Um, since it's available in the 5D Mark IV, I think it really should be in the astrophotography sp specific camera, the RA. Um, you really want to be able to take sequences of photos for astrophotography, uh, if you're doing a time-lapse video or if you're doing a series of photos for stacking. Um, the RA does have a time-lapse feature built in, however, that is designed for movie shooting and I believe it's just a hangover from the R series, um, because this is just a modified Canon EOS R, um, and it's meant for daylight work. So it doesn't save the subs, doesn't save the, the frames, it, it exports it simply as a video, so that's not an alternative. Um, it really needs to have an intervalometer built in. So that's something you'll need to consider if you want to be purchasing this. You're going to have to buy yourself an external intervalometer and all the hassle that that brings with it. However, having said that, it's a solidly built camera. It handles well on the hands. Uh, working with the F1.2, I inaccurately called it an F1.4 earlier, the F1.2 50mm is an absolute dream. You can get autofocus on the night sky with it. Just tap the screen, it gets autofocus instantly, accurately, and takes the photo. 
Uh, also at f1.2 it's so bright that you can compose the shot of the night sky just looking at the screen on the back. Um, that is incidentally a bit of a problem though. Uh, when you are using a not so fast a lens, so say an f2.8, um, framing can be a bit challenging because you're either looking at the screen and it's not bright enough, or I like to look through the viewfinder because even with, with an SLR, with the viewfinder you're looking through the lens, even though it's dark you can still see some stars, enough to give yourself a bit of a frame. But when you're looking through the viewfinder with the EOS RA, the viewfinder is quite bright and that uh, ruins your night vision. So yes, you can see the stars that are in focus, but fainter objects are going to get overwhelmed. You're not going to be able to see them. So I had a bit of trouble lining up the large Magellanic Cloud because that's a large, diffuse, dim object. I can see it quite comfortably through the viewfinder of the 5D4, but not through the RA's viewfinder. So that is a, a little bit of a challenge to, to deal with, but uh, as I said, otherwise it's technically a very, very capable astrophotography camera. There's just a few, a couple of missing features and a few um, user interface issues that make it a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. However, the articulating screen and the 30 times zoom are both very welcome additions. They uh, make things easier, the articulating screen especially. I really miss having one of those on the 5D series. Um, so would I recommend it? Well, it's a, a steep, steep price. Uh, I think it's about $4,000 Australian. Uh, the price may change, but um, you really need to uh, be dedicated into doing astrophotography. And I would suggest it's probably best for wide field astrophotography. I didn't get to stick it on my telescope. It would perform well on my telescope, but if you're gonna be doing telescopic astrophotography, you could get a much better suited camera and filters and a filter wheel and a bunch of other things to control it for the same price or less. Um, I'd recommend that for dedicated telescopic astrophotography. But if you're doing wide field stuff, you know, the lenses on a tracking mount, um, this is a really, really good competitive option. Uh, as for daylight work, I haven't had the chance to test that out. I'll, I'll do a little addendum to this video and, and show you what the daylight photos look like. Uh, I'm curious to see if there's any colour shift, any um, white balance issues, given that the, the filter is not there to correct for the infrared. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I think it's a great camera. If you've got the money to afford it and you're dedicated and you're keen, you can't really go wrong by buying the EOS RA.